here's the last Gauss's Law packet. My voice is not feeling well, but you know I have the free room. I can't not take advantage of having nobody in the room because I'm going to need all the board space to do these problems. Here's what we're looking at now. Finding electric fields due to non-uniform charge distributions outside and inside of things. We're going to keep it simple. We're only going to look at uh, cylinders and spheres, but you will see a question like this on the test. The unit 7 test will have a derivation, and it will be one of these. So here we go. <clears throat> the game plan is this. We need to relate the type of charge density, right? So it's rho, sigma, or lambda, and we need to relate that to dq. <clears throat> so take, you know, what dv, what dq, dv, dq, dA, something like that. Draw the Gaussian surface so we can identify you know, what's the area that we're talking about. Um, <clears throat> and then we need to find volume as a function of R, X, or theta. Um, and then differentiate volume, and we're going to be substituting things into the integral, you know, that surface integral, or rather, the integral to find um, what the total charge is as a function of the radius. You know, in this case, it'll be the radius or something. Yeah, in these cases. And so, <clears throat> um, substitute everything in, add up all the charge, integrate, and then state Gauss's law. E A, E dot A is Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Q enclosed, we find that through the whole derivation. Um, <clears throat> and then we can divide by A to get just the electric field. So let's take a look at our first one here. Um, we have a non-uniform charge distribution of a, it's spherically symmetrical, but it's non-uniform within the sphere. And um, the charge distribution has a function. <clears throat> okay, so the, the charge distribution rho is this. Um, rho naught, which is some constant, by the way. That's just a, a constant, some number. And then it's one minus little r over big R little r is the location, and big R is the uh, fixed radius of the sphere. Okay, so what are we talking about? We're talking about rho, so it's a volume charge distribution. So that's Q over V, or dQ dV. <clears throat> and so um, solving for, let's see. So what's our, V is 4 thirds pi r cubed, let's leave it as little r, so then dv dr is going to be 4 pi r squared. So now dv is 4 pi r squared dr. Okay. <clears throat> um, and so now let's find q enclosed. q enclosed is, we're going to add up all the little pieces of charge. And that's adding up um, <clears throat> rho dv, right? Because here, dq is equal to rho dv. And now I have a function for rho, which is this. And I have dv, I can substitute this. So this is from 0 to, let's see, we're saying inside, so from 0 to r. And then here's my function for rho as a function of r. Rho 1 minus r over r, <clears throat> rho naught. And then dv is 4 pi r squared dr. Okay. Um, so now we can take the, uh, let's kind of simplify some things first. So we bring out the rho naught 4 pi, so from 0 to r of, this will be r squared. <clears throat> Minus, and then we'll have r cubed over big R. Am I missing anything? So let's see, rho naught 4 pi, and then it'll be um, r cubed over 3 minus r to the fourth over 4 r. <clears throat> and we're going from 0 to r, so it just ends up being that. So this is q enclosed. Now we've found q enclosed. So now we want to find what the electric field is. So we know E dot A is Q enclosed over epsilon naught. 
Thankfully, E dot A is just equal to the magnitudes multiplied because our Gaussian service, oh, we didn't do that. <clears throat> our Gaussian service will be inside. All right, so this is little r. This is big R. And we set up the Gaussian surface strategically so that the electric field is um, parallel to the area vector everywhere. <clears throat> um, and so now we know Q enclosed. Area is 4 pi r squared. Right? And so E is this. No, not 4 pi r cubed over 3 minus r to the fourth over 4r over um, 4 pi r squared. And we're talking there about the surface area of the Gaussian surface. And so we, use, we still use little r, you know, epsilon naught. So that cancels out with that. <clears throat> I get this canceling out with this. And then here I'm going to have a 2 left. And so this becomes yeah, rho naught over epsilon naught, r over 3 minus r squared over 4 times big R. So that is the function for the electric field inside of this um, insulator with a non-uniform charge distribution. Now the question, where is the electric field max? Where is the maximum electric field? And so I'll take this, and I'll take the derivative with respect to r. <clears throat> Set it equal to 0. So E max is going to be rather, let's just do this. DE dr is going to be um, <clears throat> rho naught over epsilon naught. The derivative of this is just 1 third minus. Um, this is going to end up being r over 2 times big R. <clears throat> now I'll set this equal to 0. So get rid of this. So now I end up with 1 third equals r over 2r. So when r is equal to 2 thirds of the big radius, that's where I have my maximum electric field. <clears throat> you might see questions like that as well. So now we're going to look at finding the electric field outside of the non-uniform but spherically symmetric charge, uh, sphere with charge distribution, same as before. Okay. So this stuff, this, this hasn't changed. All this stuff is the same. Um, <clears throat> this is also the same. The main difference here, though, is that now I'm going from 0 to R because I'm adding up all of the enclosed charge. So let's see. Going from zero to big R. Right. <clears throat> uh, and so what we end up with here is rho naught four pi. Um, let's see. R cubed over 3 minus big R to the fourth over 4 R, except here now I get to uh, <clears throat> cancel out one of these, big R to the fourth, which is going to be rho naught 4 pi <clears throat> um, D, plus D. So this is going to end up being 4 minus uh, 3 here, so I end up with just R cubed over uh, 12. And so then this is just rho naught pi r cubed over 3. This is the, the enclosed uh, charge when we are now we're dealing with being outside of the sphere. And what this tells us also, this is the total charge on the sphere because we're outside writing up everything that's inside. <clears throat> okay, so now again we write Gauss's law. B dot A is Q enclosed over epsilon naught. A is still uh, the area of the Gaussian surface, so there we're still going to use little r. So E equals 
rho naught pi r cubed over 3 epsilon naught. And then I'm bringing the area down as well. <clears throat> so this is 4 pi r squared. So that goes away with that. And I'm left with rho naught over 3 epsilon naught r cubed. So this will be 12. <clears throat> R cubed over R squared. Okay. That's it. Um, and so now what we can do is, since this is the charge, the electric field outside, and we had the formula from before with the charge on the inside, if I set little r equal to big R, I should get the same thing. And you can test that out and see it. What does the graph here look like then? For the electric field. <clears throat> if this is big R, this is two thirds R. Um, remember, because that's where we found the max was. Maximum. So this looks uh, something like this. Okay, and this point here <clears throat> would be given by. because we substitute in big R down here. So this would just be rho naught R over 12 epsilon naught. Okay, so that's for finding a sphere. <clears throat> now let's take a look at the electric field due to a cylinder. So let's pick up here now. Here's our function for the uh, charge distribution, the volume charge distribution, <clears throat> rho. Rho is Q over V, so dQ dV. dQ is rho dV, right? Why am I doing this? Because I'm going to have to substitute in for dQ in my integral, right? And in terms of R. So rho is this, right? and then dV, I need to find that. So the volume of a cylinder is pi R squared. H. So <clears throat> dV dr is 2 pi r h. So that means that dV is 2 pi r h dr. Right? And so this is going to end up getting substituted in for that. So now to find um, the enclosed charge, right, I need to find that. <clears throat> Keeping in mind too now that um, r is less than big R where big R is the radius of this thing, and little r is going to be the radius of my Gaussian surface. The Gaussian surface, again, here is a cylinder. And I'm doing that so that when I get E dot A, it's just the magnitude is E times the magnitude of A, and the cosine of theta is just 1. OK, so let's take a look. So the net Q enclosed, I get by adding up all the little pieces of charge. The DQ is this, so that's equal to um, rho dV. Rho is this, it's rho naught, 1 minus r squared over big R squared. And I'm going from 0 to little r, because I'm staying inside. <clears throat> and then dV is 2 pi r h dr. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit. We'll take out the um, 2 pi, h is not changing, <clears throat> uh, rho naught from 0 to r. And I can multiply this. I can distribute this in there. Did I get everything out? Okay, rho naught 2 pi. That makes it go. OK, so uh, r minus r cubed over r squared. Dr. So this is going to look now like 2 pi h rho naught um, r squared over 2 minus r to the fourth over 4 big R squared. <clears throat> and so it's messy, but that is, that's Q enclosed now. And so um, E dot A is 2 Q enclosed over epsilon naught. 
Now I'm just plugging things in here. Q enclosed is this. The area, I'm looking at the, the surface area, the outside surface of the cylinder, just like we've done before. So that's just going to be um, 2 pi r, right? like so the circumference times the height. And so E is going to be equal to 2 pi h rho naught r squared over 2 minus r to the fourth over 4 r squared over epsilon naught times the surface area on the outside of that cylinder. So that's 2 pi r h. 2 pi h cancel out with these things here. And I end up with a little r on the bottom. That's going to cancel out with some of these r's. And I'm left with uh, rho naught over epsilon naught r over 2 minus r to the third over 4 big R squared. Okay. <clears throat> so this is it. That is the function for the electric field inside of a non-uniform charge distribution cylinder where the charge is given by this function, the charge density, volume charge density is here. All right, so that's for little r. <clears throat> um, and then, now if we want to make this uh, out here, we want to know what is the function for being outside of this cylinder. Uh, what's that going to look like? So we draw a new Gaussian surface being outside. Now when I'm adding up, all this is the same. This is the same. Rho is still all this. This is volume. This, none of this is changing. The thing is changing is that now I'm adding up inside all of the charge. So I'm going from zero to big R, the fixed radius of the uh, object. So I have this big R. All right, so I end up with two pi H rho naught. And then this now is R squared over two minus r to the fourth over 4 r squared. And now again, like with the sphere, I've got some canceling out that happens. <clears throat> right, let's put that away, so that's squared. So this is going to end up being 4 r squared minus 2 squared over 8 on the bottom. So that's 2 pi h rho naught. So 4 pi squared minus 2 is going to be 2 r squared over 8. So we cancel that out and make that a 4. Cancel that out with that and make this just a 2 down here. So I end up with pi h rho naught um, big R squared. And let's just put a 1 half in front. So that is the net enclosed charge. <clears throat> and then to find the electric field, so E is going to be Q enclosed over A times epsilon naught. And I'll just plug in Q enclosed is this thing, this one half I H rho R squared over the area. Again, we're still talking about the area in this of the Gaussian surface. So that's going to be two pi R, uh, little r times H, and then Epsilon naught. So let's see what happens. This ends up being a 4. Pi's cancel out, H cancels out. And so we're left with rho naught over 4 epsilon naught times um, big R squared over little r. That's it. And so then if I set little r equal to big R at the surface, whether I use this formula or the one from before when little r was less than big R, I should get the same value. Okay. And that's it. That's the end of chapter 23. That's the end of the Gauss's Law lessons. Now it's just a lot of practice doing this again and again and uh, getting used to seeing these types of problems.